In this video, I'm going to teach you how to get started with domain-driven design by pushing business logic down into the domain layer. The end result will be encapsulating the business logic inside of your domain entities, which will make it independent of low-level concerns and extremely testable. So let's see how to get started with domain-driven design. The example I'm going to use will be the cancel gathering command handler, which implements the use case of canceling a gathering. A gathering itself is a domain entity representing an in-person meetup of the members of our system. So let's check out the implementation of the cancel gathering command handler. You can see that we are injecting a few services that are required to implement this use case. We need the gathering repository, the system daytime provider, the email service, and the unit of work. Now, if we scroll down to the handle method, let's take a look at the individual steps that we have inside. First of all, we are using the gathering repository to obtain the gathering instance based on the identifier that we get as part of the command. Then we do a null check to make sure that the gathering exists. And then we go into the business logic of this use case. So first we're going to check if this gathering is already in the past, in which case there's no point to cancel it because it was already completed. So if we pass this check, we're going to then do a second check to see if this gathering has the type where the invitations have an expiration time. And if the expiration time still hasn't expired based on the current time, we're going to loop through all of the invitations that are present on this gathering and expire them one by one. We're also going to flag this gathering as canceled and then persist everything using the unit of work. Lastly, we're going to loop through all of the attendees that we have on this gathering instance and send them an email that the gathering has been canceled so that they are notified ahead of time. So now I'm going to show you how to start pushing the business logic present in this use case down into the domain layer and we're going to take it one step at a time. So let's start off by heading to the gathering entity and we're going to create a new method inside of this entity which I will call cancel. This will be the method that we're going to call from our use case and it's going to encapsulate all of the business logic that you just saw in the command handler. So let's make it return a result object. We'll call it cancel and we'll see if we need any arguments on this method. Let's see what is the first step that we're going to move from our use case into the entity in the domain layer. First of all, we have this check here to see if the gathering has already passed. And in that case, we're going to return a failure result with a respective domain error, and we're going to return from the command handler without triggering any side effects. So let's copy this if statement and move it into the domain layer. So you'll see that the gathering that we had earlier, which was a field, now becomes our gathering instance. So we're just going to check the scheduled at UTC property, but we are missing the UTC now time. There are a few ways how you could get this value and the simplest approach by far is just adding it as a parameter to the cancel method. So let me define a new UTC now parameter and our method now compiles. So in this case, we're going to do a precondition to see if the gathering didn't already pass. Otherwise, we're going to return a success result and complete the cancel method. Let's go back to the command handler. I'm going to replace the if statement here with a call to the gathering cancel method. And we're going to store the result of this in a variable. So let's call gathering cancel. We're also going to pass it the current time. And now I can use this result to see if we encountered a failure. So let's say if result is a failure, then we're going to return a failure back from our use case or the command handler. And we can do that by passing the error instance on a new result object, or we can pass the result object back directly. So whichever approach you prefer will work only this one has less allocation because we aren't creating an extra result object. So this takes care of our precondition, but what about the next part of this method, which checks the gathering type and then expires the invitations. So let's copy this if statement here and also push it down to our cancel method. So we're going to remove the gathering field to use our instance members. And now we're going to check if the gathering type is the gathering type with an expiration for invitations. And we're also using the current time, which we have as a variable to see if the invitations have already expired. So if this isn't the case, 
we can loop through the invitations and expire them. The invitations property is actually a wrapper around the invitations list, which lives inside of the gathering entity and encapsulates this collection. We also have a respective private collection for the attendees. So we can slightly improve the performance by using the list instead of the property because it simplifies the access path and we don't necessarily need to expire all of the invitations. We can expire only the ones that aren't expired yet. So I can add a filter here using the where statement and check that the invitation status is equal to invitation status pending because this is the only invitation that can be expired or accepted otherwise it was already processed and then the second thing that you can do to improve your design is make the expire method inaccessible from outside of your domain for this method to be callable from the use case it had to be public but now because we have moved the call to the expire method into the domain layer we can make it internal and everything will still compile inside of the gathering entity because they are in the same assembly. However, this method will no longer be accessible from our use case and you can see that we're getting a compile error here. But that doesn't matter because I can go ahead and take out the if statement and remove it completely. It's going to be taken care of in this call to the cancel method. And I can also now move this setting of the cancel property into the cancel method. So let's add that part. We can get rid of the field and only use the property. And now we moved all of the logic that was previously in the use case into the domain entity. If the cancel method returns a success result, we're going to proceed to save the changes to the database and then send the email to the attendees. If you take a look at the UTC now field, it's only used in one place. So you can get rid of the field and directly pass the value to the cancel method and further simplify the handler of this command. And now let's discuss how you can take care of sending the emails to the attendees when the gathering is canceled. So this step is fairly straightforward. We're just iterating over a collection of attendee entities and we're sending them an email using the email service. So let me first show you a bit of a hacky way how you could achieve this by passing in a function to the cancel method. I'm going to add another argument here, which is going to be a function that takes in an attendee and the cancellation token because this is required by the signature of the method on the email service and it returns a task because it's asynchronous. So we're going to call it, let's say, send email. And then what I have to do is to make this method asynchronous. So now it has to return a task of a result. And after we set the gathering as canceled, we're going to make a for each loop, iterate through the attendees, and then await the call to the send email method. So we call send email, pass it the attendee, pass it the default value for the cancellation token because I didn't expose it as an argument and we're going to await the task return from this method. And how you will use this from the use case is in the cancel method, you're going to pass it the second argument which is going to be email service and then you just give it the signature of the method on the email service. And then I need to await this because it's now asynchronous and everything else remains the same. Now I can get rid of this for each loop and this is what we are left with in our handle method. So there are two reasons why I don't like this approach. One of them is theoretical and one of them is practical. The theoretical reason for not using this approach is that we are making our domain impure. Now our domain needs to know about a function which is the call to the email service we have to make the domain method asynchronous and this is leaking implementation concerns into the domain layer. The second reason, which is a technical one, is that we are sending these emails from the domain without persisting the changes in the database. We only executed all of the business logic in memory and it's only in the use case after calling the cancel method that we actually go to the database after calling save changes, but regardless of this, we are still publishing these emails. So there's a risk that the save changes to the database could fail and we still send out the emails. So in order to avoid this, I'm going to show you an alternative approach and I'm going to get rid of all of this completely and clean up the domain layer. So let me remove the send email argument. I'll make this method not be asynchronous anymore. So it's just going to return a result 
and let me clean up the use case. So we're no longer awaiting. We're just going to give it the time required to calculate all of the things it needs in the domain. And this is everything I'm going to leave inside of the handle method. So just a simple call to the cancel method. The cancel method encapsulates all of the business logic. If we fail, we're going to return a failure result. Otherwise, we persist the changes and return a success result from our use case. And now let me go back to the gathering and I'm going to show you how we're going to also take care of the side effects, which is sending the emails. A very useful pattern for handling side effects in domain-driven design is called the domain events pattern. I already have this implemented and how you raise a domain event is by calling this method, which is exposed on my domain entity. And now I need to give it a domain event, which I want to publish. So let's call it the order canceled domain event. And we're going to give it a new ID because this is required by the domain event interface. And I'm also going to give it the gathering ID of the current gathering instance. This domain event doesn't exist just yet. So let's go ahead and create it inside of the domain project. I'll add it to the domain events folder and let's call it the order cancel domain event. I'm going to use a record to represent my domain event and we're going to implement the domain event base class. So this class is expecting an identifier of our domain event. So this will be a GUID and then I'll add another GUID for the gathering ID. And now I can pass the ID to the base class constructor and this is the definition of my domain event. And now if I go back to my entity, you'll see that it's compiling because we defined the order cancel domain event. And the idea behind this is we're going to process the cancel business logic, which is all of this here. Then we're going to raise a domain event and handle this domain event asynchronously to take care of the side effects. And the side effects that I'm talking about are sending the emails to the attendees. This isn't something that is critical to the cancel use case and we can easily handle it in the background with a bit of delay because it takes some time to process the domain events. But in this case, we can live with the eventual consistency in our system. So let's head back to the application layer and introduce a handler for the order cancel domain event. I'm going to add it inside of the folder for this use case so that everything is grouped together and the cohesion is better. And this will be the order cancel domain event handler. So what we're going to do is implement the I domain event handler interface. Then we're going to specify the order cancel domain event and implement the handle method. I'm going to make it asynchronous straight away. And we need just two things. First of all, we need the gathering repository to get the gathering instance. And then I'm going to need the email service to publish the emails to the attendees. So let me generate a constructor. Now I'm going to grab the gathering and I'm just going to copy this call from the handle method of our use case. I'll replace the request with our order cancel domain event. I need to check if the gathering is null by any chance, although this shouldn't really happen. So I'll say if the gathering is null, I can either throw an exception because this really is an exceptional condition or I can just silently fail and return from this method. If the gathering isn't null, we're going to iterate through the attendees and for each attendee, we're going to call the email service, send the canceled email to the attendee to notify them and we complete our order canceled domain event handler. So now we achieved three things. First of all, we greatly simplified the handler of the use case. All it's doing right now is getting the entity, calling the cancel method, which does the business logic and then persisting the changes to the database. The second thing is we move all of the business logic into our domain entity. This is just an instance method on the gathering class. And this is something that is easily testable because this is a pure function and it clearly exposes all of the parameters that it needs to perform the business logic. And the third thing that we achieved is we separated the side effects, which is publishing the emails to the attendees from the core of our business use case. In this case, we move the sending of the emails to our domain event handler which will be executed asynchronously using the outbox pattern. This was a quick video about pushing logic down to the domain layer. And if you enjoyed it, then make sure to subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos like this one coming in the future. And until next time, stay awesome.